Hi, I'm Bill Cook, Greenlee County Cooperative Extension in Duncan. What we're doing here today is we're grafting ourselves some apple trees. This is a root stock that was purchased, bare root, potted up, and allowed to grow, and now we are going to turn this into an apple tree. Uh, the choice today is Fuji. So this particular root stock is Emless 7. Um, this is our own little system here. You'll see that the corners are notched. That means Emless 7. And of course the tag will mark it as a Fuji in the date that it was done. So to get going on this, we have our, our Scion that we harvested clear back in January. And we do have a video regarding harvesting and processing and storing Scion that you can also see. One thing you'll notice here on this is that the buds on an apple point up. And you want to make sure you get this right side up or else nothing will happen. So this is our Scion. This is our rootstock. We have good, sharp, clean tools. <clears throat> we have a sanitizer on hand that we can use to sanitize tools should we feel the need or when we switch gears and start doing something else. So we're going to take a look at this rootstock and we're going to look for a nice straight section to make an easier cut. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking this looks pretty good right here. So there we have. Now it's not a perfect match but it doesn't have to be. So if you look here where we've cut the end, you'll see that green layer. That's the cambium layer. The cambium layers have to come into contact for this thing to bind together and to grow. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a rubber band on this. The rubber band will hold the end of our tape when it's all said and done. So you'll see that there are buds on this. We want to go between the buds because should we cut through the buds, um, we're going to meet a lot of resistance. And heaven knows we're cutting close to our fingers as is, why, why, uh, why create a problem? So there's buds going this way, there's buds going that way. We're going to go right between them to make this thing split easier. So we don't want to push down too hard on this because if we, when we're wiggling this thing around his pot, there's potential to, to tear roots. So we're going to support it with one hand and cut with the other. So what I have found works is to get a good grip on it with this hand, put my thumb against that hand for control as I'm cutting. I've got sort of a stop as I go down. Um, if your hands are separate, it might just go like we've all opened a bag of potato chips and it opens all at once. Well, sometimes you're cutting this and it can cut all at once. If one hand is here, one hand is there, you're going to be bleeding and it's not going to be pretty. So, we've chosen our angle to go between the buds for ease. We're holding it correctly. And now we start down through the center. And give it a little rocking motion just to get it started. And then we can go down about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. And with that open, you can see the green cambium layer just beneath the bark. So now we're going to take our scion and we're going to cut this into a wedge to fit in that opening. And you want to make one good smooth cut with every pass from the beginning to the end. The reason being that if you whittle on it, you can wind up with a hump in the middle. If there's a hump in the middle, the cambium layers won't close all the way and you won't have the contact you need. So every cut needs to be flat. And if you're in doubt, you can take the back side of this blade, you can put it against your cut, and you can look to see if there's any kind of a hump in the middle. If you have a hump in the middle, keep going. Now 
Now we're getting right down to the nitty gritty and there's a tiny bit of brown where it's dried out in storage. We're going to make sure that comes off. Okay, so that looks good. So we have a nice wedge. Now, if they were both the same size, you would go square in the middle. But if your scion's a little smaller, you'll want to go to one side because what we're doing is we're lining up the cambium layers right here on this one side. And one side is plenty. And another thing to be aware of when you're grafting like this is the thickness of the bark. If the bark is thicker on one piece or the other, you will want to adjust accordingly to line up the two cambium layers because that's the goal, green on green. So we've got a nice tight fit right there. So we're going to take our tape and we're going to start at the bottom. And we're going to take advantage of the stretch of this tape to hold it tight. And as you go, you want to make sure that you're not moving anything. So we go to the top, and then come back down to the bottom, and we cut our tape. And then we put this rubber band over the end of the tape. This way, during the summer or whatever, if the tape won't come loose. If the tape starts coming loose, well then it breaks the seal, might let a little air in there, things could dry out, so on and so forth. So you want the tape to remain snug. Then we go to the top here, and you can see it's a little bit brown from you know being in the refrigerator since January. So we're going to come and we're going to cut that back so that we have nice, shiny, green, beautiful growth, or sign. So then we're going to take the tangle foot. To, this is going to seal it to keep the air out because the, the biggest threat to this graft is drying out. The, what the tangle foot does is it seals everything. I use tangle foot as opposed to the old traditional grafting wax because it remains pliable. So if it starts to crack or run, you can reapply it, move it around with a stick. Um, grafting wax, you don't have that option. So we make sure we cover the whole thing, including the slice, if the slice goes below the tape. And then we make real sure up here where the top of the wedge is, there will be a little bit of wood exposed. We make sure to cover that. Any cut surfaces need to be covered. Then we take the last little bit here and we seal the top. And this guy is ready to go in the greenhouse or you can keep them outdoors. I like the greenhouse, it just increases the odds a little bit. So the final step is we take our tag, like I said, we know it's M7 because we've notched both corners. So we write on it what variety we grafted on and the date. And I like to mark both sides because the Sharpie tends to fade over time, particularly in a greenhouse situation. Then what I like to do is slide it down the side of the pot with one side against the wall of the pot because if it does fade on the outside, the part against the wall of the pot probably won't. Because after all, you want to know when you go to plant this thing, you don't want to know, is it a Fuji, was it a Golden, what is it? So there you have it, that's whip grafting.